prologue. He rose from the darkness, certain that no one had noticed him. Black mist slowly drifted out into the cool night and then disappeared into the shadows. His field of vision became clear again and he saw massive rose bushes sprawling in front of him. Behind them lay Maple Avenue, illuminated only by an old, rusty street lamp. It was the only light around, a failed attempt to fend off the darkness. No one can escape the darkness. No one. He focused his eyes on the lantern and remembered the past centuries. All the murders, the suffering, the fear, all of that magnificent. Darkness flowed through him, flooded his soul and gave him a feeling of indescribable power. He thought of a cloud of deepest blackness and then released the thoughts and feelings into the strange new world. A hardly recognizable old streak left his hand. The entity floated away across the street and then headed mercilessly towards the streetlight. With an ugly hum, the cloud enveloped the light source. Hissing loudly, it finally slid into the bulb and shattered the glass with a dull bang. It was now completely dark on the street, and he gleefully sucked in the stench his creation had left behind. Then he floated forward and slid through the rose bushes, almost as if they were air. With a delightfully sickening crackle, the plants died and sank to the ground, where they remained rotten. He continued his way across the street, which seemed to blur beneath him, stopped next to the broken lantern and looked at the shards lying on the ground. This light ended as all lights should. Then he heard a crackling sound and turned around, searching. Lurking, he checked the surroundings. Like any of his kind, he could see perfectly in the dark. In the distance, he spotted two squirrels that seemed to sense his presence and took flight. Then he saw him. At the end of the street, at the intersection with Church Street, a man appeared, tall and dressed all in black. He had a staring, piercing gaze. His blue eyes were visible in the dark. They shone brightly in the night, almost like two large fireflies. The man turned his head left and right to make sure they had no uninvited listeners and then also strode toward the lantern. This man was not afraid of him, unlike the many creatures before. There was no reason to be. He had made it possible to enter this new world and survive here. Soon a new age would dawn. Soon the last light would fall and darkness would drown the world. Horrible, beautiful, eternal darkness. The man began to grin devilishly as he reached the lamp. His face contorted into a grimace, the blue eyes grew unnaturally large and the mouth widened. The face was pale like that of a corpse, but the teeth were not rotten, but flawless and white. Good evening, Sclare. It is time to notify your followers. We cannot and must not wait any longer. Winter is approaching and the days are already getting darker. If we let this opportunity pass, we will have to wait out another year and I suspect you would not like that. The man remarked. His voice was soft but still clear and threatening. Yes, I will be on my way as soon as possible, Sclare quickly replied. 
Sclare. That was a name like any other. He had had many before, but this had been his first. You must move faster. How many have you killed already? The two I recommended as test subjects? Three. First, another baby I found in its room, fast asleep. Easy game. After that, I attacked the little boy as planned. He called for help, though. What? I told you that couldn't happen. If you had been photographed, you would be in tremendous trouble now. The man hissed. He bared his teeth and his nostrils began to quiver uneasily. Don't worry, it was just the father there. Just like you said, Sclare tried to appease him. I went in unnoticed and then I made myself invisible and passed through the child. He noticed how the man apparently shuddered but his eyes revealed that he was actually indifferent to this news. Probably he was simply trying to imitate a person of this world? Sclare doubted, however, that his opposite had more in common with a human being than he had with a butterfly. Hastily he continued. That was quite a violent shock for the father, to see how I suck his son into me. Fortunately, the man did not suffer for long. My hand became a claw and then... Sclare let out what sounded like a mixture of the sound of a bustle and the roar of a waterfall. His way of laughter. I suspect they are still looking for his head. But let them search. Nobody is ever going to find it. The crime scene was really interesting. I took the liberty of visiting it uh, myself just after you did. The police, uh, the guardians of order in this world, they believe that the kid himself murdered his originator. It is quite amazing how simple humans think. The man sped out the word humans as if it disgusted him even to think about it. Sclare was a little infuriated that the blue-eyed man had come sniffing after him and that he couldn't brag now about his deeds, but then he thought of something that would cheer him up. Sclare laughed again. Well, let us ask the boy, or do you mind? Before the blue-eyed man could say anything, Sclare opened his mouth. A long-drawn, high-pitched scream escaped from his transparent throat. Tensely, Sclare waited for a stirring of emotion from his opposite. It failed to happen. When will you have absorbed his power? The man asked with interest instead. It will be two days at most before he is swallowed by my darkness. Then there will be nothing left of the unfortunate Arveth Smith. Sclare explained with a broad grin. We shall see, but for now you should seek out the others of your kind as quickly as possible. You have to get started, and, oh, Sclare, I have another gift for you. The man whispered something to the shadow. Sclare let out a final laugh and disappeared into a cloud of black mist that suddenly came drifting in. The blue-eyed man remained under the lamp a bit more and then also disappeared into the darkness, just as quickly and quietly as Sclare had. 